What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your Troll Force at the Skyrender. And yeah, a bit early on the LBA game this time, and it's only for one reason, and that is to build some kind of hype for an upcoming match, because this is our last game, and um, we need to win this one to uh, make playoff, but also, there's another opponent which actually needs to lose for us to make playoff, so... That game has not come to fruition, and I really want to showcase this, no matter how, what the outcome of the, their, their game is. And we're going against Marcus or Swaglet, and he pretty much brought the team I was thinking of. He has Zapdos, which is a mod I was preparing for too, but outside of that, it pretty much fits the bill. Uh, I myself is bringing a Life or Thunder's Max Speed to Speed Latias, uh, Rose Raid, Assault Vest to survive whatever matchup comes to fruition, um, Southland Bandit, nothing to it, Scar Tranitar of uh, Ni Hasty Nature, to outspeed uh, Ashinchino even, with of course Ice Beam and stuff like that to be able to deal with his Scarf Chump if it isn't Scarfed. Uh, Scarf Guard War with Moonblast, um, Shadow Ball, M uh, Psychic, and Healing Wish. And Dewblade to wall all the mons that uh, can touch it basically, in this case Metagross actually. So not as much as I hope for, but at the same time, if his um, Guard Chump is Scarfed, then at least Shadow Sneak outspeeds it, which means that we can get some Resil damage. And no, neither Latias nor Metagross like taking a Shadow Sneak from Dublade. So it's pretty straightforward actually. But I really just need to win the game. I don't really need to play for differentials. So uh, basically I was being pretty basic. So yeah, with all this my guys, let's go. So yeah, from the get-go my opponent will start off with Garchomp as I start with uh, my Thunders. And I'm just gonna pull a double here because I really want to find out whether or not he's Scarfed because if he's Scarfed then he's gonna stay in, if he isn't Scarfed then he's not gonna stay in and I can take an earthquake if he goes for it. Luckily for me he goes for Stone Edge, I was pretty sure it was gonna go for an Outrage, I could wall that. But that doesn't happen and uh, at this point I was thinking, alright, so now at least no he's Scarfed and it probably is fast enough to outspeed my Guard of War next turn so I'm not gonna stay in until he locks into Stone Edge. I go to Dewblade as he goes for Metagross, that's actually quite right. So I'll take this opportunity to go for Shadow Sneak because I'm pretty sure he wants to see the damage. And he's just going to go for Earthquake and that's not going to do a whole lot. And knowing that, I'm just going to go for Toxic here because I know he knows that he won't win the matchup. And I really need his Arcanine Toxic. Now if he goes for Porion, that's okay. That's a mod that also needs to be Toxic. So we get that chance out of the way. And I can switch in my Assault as a Rose Red at this point because even if go for an Ice Beam, it really shouldn't do a whole lot of damage to us, so I'm feeling really safe going in here. And, uh, well, you know, there goes Ice Beam, so nice prediction on my opponent's side. And, um, yeah, we eat that really well, that's roughly 25%, so we can deal with that. And I'm gonna go for extra sensory here, actually predicting his Among Us. He goes to Arcanine, sadly, and Arcanine actually takes this really nicely, like, stupidly nicely, uh, because... Arcanine is quite bulky, like I tend to forget that or not really forget it, more like shit, this thing actually eats things, that's annoying. So I need to find a way of actually destroying this Arcanine and that is not through Rose Raid. So predicting the Flare Blitz I'm, or a close combat, I'm actually gonna bling Dewblade because I think Dewblade kinda does well here. Um, luckily for me he goes to Among Us, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to go for an Iron Head and he gets his Spore off. The thing is that I'd rather have Dewblade Sport than anything else, because that means that he can actually stand against here. No, I could have gone to my, or I should actually have gone to my Rose Ray, but didn't do that. Kind of dumb actually, but it was the option I had to choose from. Now he will switch out his Among Us and going to go to back to his Orcanine, and I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of bad. But at the same time, he is in a low amount of HP, so all I need is that he goes for Flare Blitz and to get it with Stone Edge. Uh, or with Sand, Stone Edge should be able to Oko this mount from this range because Stone Edge does at max around 90% of his full defensive and if he loses a amount of HP, which he will do of course because he's a goal for Flare Blitz then he looks like this is a pretty much a solid one hit KO if go for Stone Edge like I said, I am Scarfed after all and uh, yeah, that looks like he is at least around 80, maybe maybe 70 but at least I have, a, have basically at this point a pretty solid 80% uh, chance of killing him and yeah, you know, this is not the first Thunder Rolls, it's not in my favor, and obviously he will burn me, and that's really unfortunate because I needed a Scarf Crunch for his Latias. So being burned sucks, like a whole lot, it sucks a whole lot. And he can freely go, of course, to his Metagross knowing that I am Scarfed, and um, 
I was really hoping for an earthquake, but I know I could have gone for bullet punch. She goes for a stronger move, more being of course meteor mash, and uh, yeah, that sucks. Uh, luckily for us though, we are of course naturally faster, and uh, I'm just gonna go for dark pulls. And I should have realized here, I get a lucky flinch on you guys, but uh, I do find out later that his metagross is scarfed, and so is my thunderous, but I didn't, didn't think it was. I was so sure I was life orb, which obviously I'm not because I have nasty blood on this thing. So that is actually quite intimidating because had I not been scarfed, I would have died there, and I get a lucky flinch, but of course, I was so sure I was gonna kill him, I was so surprised that he survived that hit, so I was thinking, oh, maybe he's. Maybe this assault vest, maybe that, that makes sense. So anyway, he's gonna switch out his Among Us, gonna go to Garchomp, predicting my switch into, of course, my Dewblade. Which, in all honesty, can't do a whole lot of shit here, it's just gonna go out. And I'm gonna bring back Tyranitar, and pretty much Sakic, and bring in my Stoutland, because Stoutland really needs to stop hurting things, because we are turning out into the game where I am forced to do nothing and switch in and out, back and forth. And I don't have a team that is made for stamina. I have a team made for Hurden, and I need to bring the Hurden. So we force down the guard jump, pretty much to a KO range. I, maybe I should have gone for Flare up there. I was so sure a return would have hit or do enough damage, and I didn't want to be in a position where Among Us can come in and waste my sand turn. So he's gonna go to his Metagross, second it basically. And um, yeah, I mean, I really don't have too many options here, do I? So. Uh, Obviously, he's gonna bring in either Mongus or his Vaporeon, and I need to go Rose Raid or my Gar or Guard War. But I decide to go to Guard War because I can actually trace his Water Absorb, thinking that he's most likely gonna go for a Scald against me and not for a Wish. And well, you know that is exactly what happens. So at least I get a mighty amount of damage back, uh, which it needs because obviously being whittled down is not really that favorable. So yeah, that works in our favor. It really, really, really does. Return would maybe have killed his Vaporeon. But I really didn't think that I was in a position where I could make that call. Now, I'll go for a Moonblast, thinking that we, he would switch out his Latias, pretty thin Psychic. So that's quite right. So now I see that he's most likely gonna go to either his, his um, Garchomp, but most likely it's Among Us. But he will actually go for a Wish. And that, my people, sucks. Because that means that he could possibly bring his Garchomp get more HP here. And I basically decided I need to go for Giga Ray. I need to go for strongest move naturally. So it doesn't get HP on his guard chomp. I cannot risk that. I simply cannot. Uh, luckily for me, he goes to Latias, which, like I said, it is his Mega, and that's actually okay because my Guard War pretty much walls this thing. He needs to set up Cold Mine to be in a position where he would threaten me. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like obviously this Mon is extremely scary and kind of hard to deal with. But I knew at least can bring it, force it down a little bit. And it goes for Psychic, which is not a 2 hit KO, luckily. And I retaliate with a Moonblast, which, like I said, it is a 50% hit if I don't crit. Yeah. So that just happened. So I crit the Latias out of the way. And that is extremely fortunate for me, obviously, because that meant that a major pressurement is away. Now he'll go to his Among Us, and um, he, of course, gonna pull a double on me. Extremely risky, and I said in go for that Moonblast, his Garchomp would have been dead, so mighty prediction on my opponent's side, and I'm basically just forced there to sack Arclass, or I'm not forcing it or forced to sack it, I just, he need to go for Earthquake to kill me, but he actually has Fire Blast, so I'm forced there to switch out, seeing that I know his Scarf, but I'm not, or at least I thought I wasn't, and I'm gonna bring in Stoutland. Now, he, <laughs> of course, knows that I'm faster, and that is kind of funny because I didn't know that I thought that he... I'm actually sacking Southland here, but no, that did not happen. And Wolf actually gets a kill here, which is incredible. Not gonna lie. That is really, really incredible. And now I'm gonna force to sack Southland. Now, the thing is here, I could have gone to my Thunders, but there was no reason for him of going for Earthquake outside of actually just killing my opponent or killing me. So I'm gonna bring Arclass here, knowing that I, I was pretty sure I was logged into his... Um, sorry... Uh, his Earthquake, so I'm gonna trace him now with Guard of War, thinking that... Or, I didn't never get that I actually switched out before he switched out, which I thought was really weird. Uh, so I'm just gonna go for free Psychic here, pretty much force him down. And I was pretty sure this was gonna kill. It is not. It is not killing him. And he's gonna get a clear smog crit on me, which actually matter, but at the same time, a Sludge Bomb would kill me, so it's not really that big of a deal. Though I should probably go for Healing Wish and actually fix my... Uh, 
uh, sorry, fixed my dew blade at that point. So now I'm gonna go for rotate, and I don't know why I did that. I was supposed to go to my dew blade, and luckily he doesn't pull that double on me, and it goes for hidden power ice, which is extremely unfortunate. Had it been hit with our fire, that would probably have killed me, and I've been forced to use rotate to kill this man. And like I said, at this point, I don't know that my thunder's is scarf, so I don't know how speeds his guard chomp. So at this point, it actually was a GG, but for me, the stress is still here because, like I said, I don't know that I'm scarfed. I have no idea. Uh, so anyway, I'll try to stall out the, um, the sleep turns because I need Shadow Sneak to be available. Um, that's really all it is. So I was pretty much sacking those sleep turns and then I go to the Dauros because Extra Sensory is more than enough to kill this Among Us or, if anything, his Hidden Power Eye should not do anything to me. And he can't switch out because if he switched out, his Garchomp dies. So I got him in a pickle here. I just don't see what kind of pickle I've created for him. Sexual Sensory does a mighty amount of damage. He's gonna go for Hidden Power Ice. And um, that's a nope. That's a nope. Um, so, yeah, we are actually are pretty golden here. And uh, I go for Sexual Sensory, actually getting Among Us out of the way. Which means his Guard Jump is the only mon that is left. So, at this point, like I said, I am pretty sure it's Scarfed. So, I'm gonna see the Dragon Claw thinking, oh, nice, that means that my Dewblade can take two of these, awesome. So, we're gonna take that opportunity to bring Dewblade, and hopefully we, we wake up next turn for that Shadow Sneak. We don't do that, and the worst part is that he switches out, moves to Earthquake, and then it just realizes, oh my god, he isn't Scarfed. I won this game, but I sacked so many Mons in vain. I sacked so many Mons. In vain, I outspeed it naturally, and it's gonna show his Yasha Berry. Fair enough, and we win this game. And I'm like, the hell just happened. So, right, some afterthoughts, of course, because we do win the game, and like I said, there we only needed to win, we not necessarily played for any kind of differentials because it all boils down to whether or not my um, or the other guy that actually can make it. Um, of course wins his match, he just needs to win it at the same time, he doesn't need to play it against differential, it's all against, or it's all up to whether or not my opponent wins or not, and I really hope it doesn't, because that means that we may play off, which is something that I think is fair, I mean this is easily the worst season I've had in any league, we go 6 for 6, but I've never played a season like that, and I feel that I have two hacks wins or two hacks losses against me, but also have a hacks win. I'll even say that this is close to hacks win too. Uh, and actually, I can't believe this, but that my that um, well, that my guard is or not? Sorry, my thunders is scarfed. Actually, wins me the game, and I don't realize it's scarfed. I I should have noticed that I don't see life or recall, but I didn't do that. And against the metagross, due to me being scarfed is the reason I cannot win this game, because I don't lose funders there and then. Then again, you know, obviously, he probably had Ice Beam, right? Or Ice ice Punch, which definitely would have destroyed me. And uh, I was so sure that Dark Pulse was gonna kill him, so when I didn't do that, I was like, hmm, he must be an Assault Vest, that could be the only reason. Uh, I didn't really pay too much attention to it, and there actually are a few of these kind of mistakes. And uh, I'm, I'm lucky to come out on top, because, like I said, it, it's very obvious that... Um, I, I'm, <laughs> I don't have the right sets, and I still break through. And the way I played around against the Garchomp, being so sure it was gonna scarf and destroy me, I had no reason doing so. I really had no reason doing so. And my road trade, who wasn't timid, was actually modest and said, had it been timid, it would have speed the Garchomp, uh, since it went for an adamant nature. That also kind of bothers me, because it, I, it feels that he went for a wall-breaking attitude, it, it would have paid off in this kind of environment, and I mean, I should have noticed something when my Stealthling did not O-code the Garchomp that he probably was a different set because it was supposed to kill him. There, there were basically no reason for me not going for Return. I could have risked the play rough, but Return was pretty close to a one KO, so I thought, it was, oh wow, that's pretty much the minimum roll later, didn't I? But, you know, it is what it is. I thought the game was a really nice one. It came down pretty close, and I think it was stressful for the both of us, and we actually, while it was a hacks game, I think the hacks distribution was evened. Though I will say that Moonblast crit was insane. Obviously, I would have survived the psychic from um, from the Larias, but still. And at the same time, had I not 
had a mana of HP left in my guard war, I probably would have went for Heal of Wish in the first place on my Thunderers and wrapped the game up from there. So, pretty interesting game. Like I said, we do win it, and I think it is a bit unfair. Luckily, it's only a 1-0, which means that Marcus still have a chance of actually surviving. He only has one game left, and he's close for regulation, but he only needs to win his next one to guarantee not to be at risk. And the way I play today, I'm pretty sure he will pull that off. So, for Marcus, thank you so much for watching, and I'll keep you guys updated whether or not I make playoffs. I thought I'd make this video before to make things more exciting, because we actually don't know how things will turn out. And uh, therefore, I upload this a bit earlier, because uh, my next video is either that we make playoff, or uh, I'll wrap up about the LBA. So, with all that said, I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, if anything, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.